when each of you looks at these three computers, which one draws your attention? If I could tell you they could do about the same thing for about the same price, which one would you buy? Human intuition tells me that most of you were drawn to C. Not because of its capability, but because of its design. Maybe red is your favorite color. Or that you like its sleek lines and curves. Or its general feel compared to the other two. Regardless, this is a moment when art and technology collide. And over the last 12 years, this idea has been revolutionizing the, the way that we teach science, technology, engineering, and math today, also known as STEM. STEM refers to a form of K through 12 education that teaches science, technology, engineering, and math in more of a project-based way, rather than being textbook driven. The idea was coined in the early 2000s it was an integral part of both George W. Bush and Barack Obama's education policies during each of their times as presidents of the United States. In 2007, President Bush enacted the American Completes Act, and then his successor reauthorized the act, both of them understanding that science interests needed a jumpstart in today's education system. And over time, or as the president has spoke, Science is more than a school subject, or the periodic table, or the properties of waves, but is an approach to the world. And over time, the STEM initiative has grown and evolved. The arts have been discussed being added to STEM as well, forming STEAM. Reading and writing have more recently joined the conversation, forming STREAM. Needless to say, educators have been forced to begin to discuss how the humanities fit in the education of science today. But does that miss the point? Does adding the arts, reading and writing take away from the entire STEM initiative? Does their inclusion remove its entire purpose of increasing student achievement in the sciences? Will it hinder the STEM professionals of tomorrow? I would say no, that the arts, reading and writing play a critical role in our success in the future. Because when we talk about the arts, we're not just talking about painting, we're talking about graphic design, sculpture, culture, and pure creative expression. The, the arts allow us to convey emotion more than just something's functionality. And that emotion can be the difference between an idea's success and its failure. As the arts show us who we really are, reading lets us learn from others, and writing gives us the chance to pass on our knowledge to the next generation. Looking back at my original question, which one of these drew your attention? It was color, shape, and contrast. It's subtle, but the scientists and engineers made a visible decision to include these artistic elements into their design, and they made a much more memorable product because of it. As these STEM professionals may focus on the hard math and equations, but they still need the arts, reading, and writing to reach their full potential. Recently, one of my engineering professors in a lecture was discussing circuit board design to us. Circuit boards being one of the most influential technology in all modern day electronics. And he told us this, read the data sheets. Understand a technology, know how to use it effectively, and be able to implement it safely. Because when all three of these things come together, the next great thing can come about. As the powerful technologies of tomorrow aren't going to be discovered by accident in some lab, but their inspiration will come from everywhere and by everyone. George D. Menstrel had invented Velcro after walking through the woods and noticing how burdock seeds stuck to their clothing. Marn Cooper had invented the first mobile phone, inspired by the 1931 comic strip Dick Tracy. 
and Leo Solred was one of the lead scientists behind the invention of the atomic bomb, inspired by H.G. Wells' 1914 novel, The World Set Free. Nature, a cartoonist, and a biologist, all had inspired revolutionary technology beyond their fields. But these innovative technologies can only happen when students are in the classroom. Adding the arts to STEM can help these students stick with these subjects despite their rigor. And it's up to us to show them that STEM professionals are more than just calculators, but they're visionaries. Visionaries that use math as a foundation to launch the creativity and visions of how to improve the world. If a student ever comes us, up to us and says, oh, I'm just not a math person, or science is too hard, that's just a moment that we failed to show them how influential science is in everyone's lives, regardless of their profession. And in truth, the arts can be taught in a STEM context. Imagine being taught the physics of dance, the forces at play with every move, whether that be friction, gravity, or torque. Being taught waves in terms of notes on a musical scale, seeing how their pitch changes its energy or its wavelengths, or material science, choosing just the right source to make the next great sculpture, whether that be by using granite, clay, or glass. But we can look no further than New York. What a better way to teach chemistry than by looking at the Statue of Liberty. When the copper statue was originally given to the United States from France in 1876, it was its natural color, copper brown. But over time, as the copper oxidized with the water around it, it became the vibrant green that we know today. And despite all of these improvements in student retention and creativity, the true benefit of the arts comes in diversity and awareness. Project teams today are no longer just scientists or engineers, but they include a wide range of professions, going from accountants, HR, marketing, lawyers, and philosophers, each one of them with their unique mindsets and contributions to a project and its solutions. And it's up to the STEM professionals to know how they can contribute to a project, their different approaches, as well as be able to explain technical concepts to them in basic English instead of jargon. As a result, these other professions get to learn about the hard sciences. And better yet, the STEM professionals get to better understand the technology they're creating. The automaker Tesla had coined the phrase autopilot in order to convey how well their vehicles can drive autonomously. What the feature does is while on the highway, uses sensors to keep the vehicle in its lane as well as a set distance and speed from the vehicle in front of it. The problem becomes is when the companies do not properly explain these features limitations to the consumer. The consumer might just think and assume that the vehicle can drive autonomously just by the name autopilot alone. And let me be perfectly clear, they cannot. Via, cars today cannot drive autonomously, not yet, and especially not in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, it was the snow. <laughs> but again, being perfectly clear, people have died because of these miscommunications. The STEM professionals of tomorrow need to understand how their technology and innovations will affect the world more broadly whether that be impacts on society, the environment, the economy, or even if it's ethical to pursue such innovations. Adding the arts to STEM can promote a mindset of pause and give these professionals an opportunity to better understand their technology, potentially saving lives.
Because in the end, with a stream education, the STEM students of tomorrow will gain the confidence, the creativity, and the awareness to make the world a better place. As STEM is the soil that sets the foundation, the arts are the catalyst for their imaginations <laughs> to flourish. Thank you.